I'm actually currently working as well and I'm at the meeting too. So sure. Sure, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. So this so how did this happen and the expectation of this this to happen why did it happen and where is it coming from it's gonna be quite of a eye-opening thing but once you guys see it you will know exactly what i'm talking about um i'll do a top down i'll go over this big cell and then i'll go over some of these small little traits that i've taken so I I I I messaged you guys and I showed you guys my my view on on the market a couple of times already saying that the monthly the monthly is bearish. Monthly is bearish only for one reason. Can anyone tell me why? It's the fact that this, decision that was, yeah. Yes, that's it. Simply, that's it. That's it. That's how you set your market flow, right? then you could write it out on your notes, whatever, however you want to do it, but always understand the market flow for monthly, weekly, daily. That's all you need to do, right? So you can say monthly is, there, that's it. You leave the level there. You can take reactions from it, which I'll show you in just a moment. But because you have a break of this level, even the slightest closure indicates that soon this SNR level is going to break. I've been trying to initiate this cell all last week, but the daily and the weekly time frames were bullish, and I found I found out finally that it's just going to a, another monthly level to continue the monthly storyline. All right. So the true monthly level that you needed to observe was the decision level that broke the the the, the bullish decision level. This is the bearish decision level that broke. And like I say, you you like to see it being respected one time at least, right, with the rejection, and and that's what happened in, in the month prior, right? So let's go into weekly and and observe that even more closer. Oh, actually, one more thing. It's just oh, I don't like forex.com. I don't like forex.com, guys. It's not. It's not compatible with my uh, but this, you, I don't know I don't know what it is. But like mo most of the Malaysian SNR teachers, they teach with forex.com. Uh, I've had the worst luck with it. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but for me, this, these candle closures on forex.com, this right here is it's it's, it's 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 ugly. So so for me, Oanda with the one hour shifted ahead, it, it's a lot better. It gives me more cleaner information. So, all right, let's do that again. Right here, we got our monthly decision level here. Monthly also found a key area right here, which gave us a, a after the breakout. So we have the breakout and it found a key support area, suggesting that the pullback is going to be a very strong pullback being that it reacted at a pinpoint decision level on the monthly. So let's go into weekly and then set the market flow there. Hey guys, I'm going to mute you if you want to say anything. Um, you can unmute yourself. Uh, how do I do that? Let me see, let me see. All right. Yeah, so monthly market flow is bearish. Okay. 
Now let's try to before before all this happened, let's try to figure out what the weekly was, right? When you saw the break of this monthly level right here, you would you would also have to say that weekly is bearish as well because it broke a monthly level. So at that moment in time, you would have to say that weekly is also bearish. And then we can go to daily and then set the market flow there. And, that, and that's all you have to do. You don't have to set the market flow for H4. H4 is for a completely different, uh, it, it, it gives you direction, but you use it a, a, a different way. Um, it's sorry about that. All right. So we will go to daily as well. So that level that we we just pointed out on the monthly. It's right here. Daily. Month. Daily also broke here. Decision level that broke that level came from here on. I'll go over this in just a moment, but this was the decision level that broke many rally decisions. To give you a look of it, it's right here. So even then on the daily, you're getting indication that because of these decision levels being broken before the monthly level even broke, you're getting indication that the, the market is gonna keep selling. So the fact that your mo in current market price, that this daily closed below this level right here, say you got the sell from up here, Maybe you you took something from here and your trend line was, uh, let's just say it was something like that. So you got that, that entry from the top, right? The way you would manage this trade, specifically looking at the daily, is what took price up to this decision level? It's this decision level. Eventually, what happened was price broke it. We can also get more indication of that happening when you go into H4. Play price forward. H4, let me just get this right. Yeah. This break of this, this, this level right here. Translate it back into the daily, you're getting a signs of continuation. Once you get that last, uh, or whatever you want to say, uh, support or whatever, it, you have to see the decision level again that took price to the resistance. And if it's broken, it gives you signs of bearishness. All right. Then what you see is it's 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 broken a monthly level, but it's also found something here eventually. So let me play price forward. It found this guy right here. This level right here, I also took a trade from, but I didn't hold it. I knew that it was going to just be an area of pull back, mainly because this was a Thursday. The ICT, Michael J. Huddleston, a lot, a lot of mentors, they say, yeah, like uh, open OHLC. You'll see that the candle is going to, it's going to create the higher low of the week. Um, 
when I saw the break up, when I saw the break happening, I'm thinking any rally up is just a pullback. I remember also explaining the idea of OHLC. If you are, uh, if you're bearish, the market needs to go up first go down and do that and that's what that's what it was that's the idea of what my 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 logic was is that now at the end of the week we're, we're going to start creating the work so taking this by simply came from the decision level and why is that decision level i will tell you in just a moment so simply because this decision level broke above multiple drop decision levels. That's it, right there. And then you can also point out this level here. So it becomes a significant level. If a, a, a decision level becomes high probability when it breaks another decision level. And then if you track price, if you just follow this logic and go through the whole, the whole, the whole price action history, you're going to see that happening. Price is just reacting from decision level to decision level. Right here, look at this decision level. This decision level, you got the last push and it pushed up. But why this decision level? Well, if you look back right here, bring this push up. Slide it over. You'll see that it broke this decision level here. Oh, it broke this, this decision level here. This decision level is important because using multi time frame analysis, you'll see that this, uh, this pushes down here. Let me get that box back. This push down here closed below this one here, right? So when you saw the break of this decision level that took price up, and I'll show you exactly what this broke in the past, but when you saw that this level was broken, the retest of that decision level that broke this decision level was was your pullback, right? And then you bring in your your trend lines again. There's so many that you could you could pick from here. This is daily, but if I were to pick a daily trend line, most likely it would be something like that, or uh, it's not too tight, it's not too pretty, uh, something like that on the daily, but H8, that's daily. You can find something much cleaner in the lower time frame. All right, so then let's go back into this movement here. Why is this a decision level? Pull it back, pull it back, and you're going to see the same shit. Bada bing, bada boom, right? Look, you have a decision level that broke a drop decision, but why did price respect this level and not this one? I, t I remember telling you guys that sometimes the market, it's pretty much SBR, RBS of decision levels. That's what it is. If you can, uh, write it down somewhere, keep that in your, your notebook or in your mental notes. Decision level is SBR R or RBS of decision level. <laughs> Using multi-time from analysis, you will see that when, once you have the rejection come here instead of here, 
So let's see if we could do that. You have that daily level. You also have that daily level aligning with an H4 level. So when you see the rejection happen one time, then you can you can start taking positions here. The, the, the sustained, uh, what is it, sideways movement here could have been something a lot. Uh, uh, let's see, we can if we can find it, but there is always going to be something to tell you why. Let's see if we have enough information. Okay, we have this guy here and go this one here. Okay, so you have this decision level, price rejected, Okay, great. So you looked for an entry. All right, price came back into your decision level again. You want to see two things happening when you're managing the trade. You want to see immediately. The first thing if you're managing a trade is the break of the decision level that caused put down or up into the decision level. So you can identify it's this, this level right here. This H4 basic look, you wanna see it break, right? If it, if it breaks, it gives you sign of continuation. If it rejects, it does not mean that your, your buy is invalid, but if it rejects and it, so if it rejects, uh, if price came up here and then it came down and closed below this level, then your buys are invalidated. But you can see that after contacting this, this area, um, yeah, you could have taken a hedge position and sell, but the main thing is, is that it hasn't broken even in, even in the H4, even the, the, the buildup to that level none of those levels were violated. So you can you can be sure to hold your trade, continue to hold your trade. And also using multi time frame analysis, um, let me just, you know, I hope it doesn't screw up, but let me go into the daily level real quick. On the daily, it doesn't it doesn't break any decision level here either. So you would continue to hold your bias. Okay, so let's go back into H4 and then ride the price. Let's see how we can add more and take take hedge positions. However, let's let's see how we can do that. All right, so. If you miss this initial buy here, you have another opportunity at this moment here. You see that your decision level is this. Why is this a decision level? Because the result of this push up broke an H4 decision level here, right? So you have to tell yourself that, all right, daily is bullish, H4 is bullish. Any pullback down is just, any any drop is just a pullback. That's all you would have to say. And you, I remember telling this to my guys yesterday. Um, you can take entries of a decision level at the first rejection at multi time frame with multi time frame. So if it's an H four decision level, so if it looks like this. This is H4 and it come, and H1 is coming down, but there's no rejection yet. What you want to see at that moment in time is H1 reject the level one time at least. One time at least, right? So you see that H1 candle is, is building up. 
You got the rejection one time, so there's four, uh, three more candles left. The next H1 candle, you want to see how it's opening up, right? Again, you're trying to buy. The idea of OHLC, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to drill it into your brain. But the fact is, the candle needs to go down first. People might be thinking, oh, shit, uh, this. Uh, the market is gonna it's going to drop but no 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 that's what that's what like fools people uh same thing like uh like this right here right you have the rejection one time when people see this happening they're, they're selling breakout traders or whatever they're seeing that happening we know that as however you want to call it, last push or the last retest, whatever. But if H4 doesn't have that, you would need to use H1 and then look for that rejection, come come through. And then you can start looking for entries. At that moment right. in time, go ahead. Uh, can you go back down real quick? Um, Right where you're saying that it had the first rejection, that big wick that's right before the decisional level. Why wouldn't that be? Why wouldn't that be the rejection? Oh no, it is a re it is a rejection for sure. It is. It is. Okay. It's a rejection for sure. Yeah. Okay. I thought I'm you were only considering the. Oh no 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 no! no. It's yeah. it's a rejection. It's a rejection. Um. Okay. If you, what I'm saying is, if you miss this the buy coming from this one here. Mm -hmm. then you can you, you can get involved in this one here only oh, okay, because okay. the drop down didn't violate our daily h4 uh um decision level all right mm -hmm. so then what we do is we'll continue to manage price we'll write price action and we'll look for the closures of h4 this is where it, this is where we use h4 h4 is very important to manage our trade and also determine direction you'll have your higher time frame level market flow set and then you want to see how h4 is closing at your decision levels or how it's going to your decision levels right so you got into this buy here this guy right here you wanted to see price create a decision which it did right here the closure above the previous close uh, uh open is a, it's a breakout this is a breakout from here on out i want you guys to look at this as a breakout as opposed to snr breakout snr breakout Right. From here on out, instead of waiting for this to happen, even the excuse me, someone else is trying to come in. The break below this level is enough to tell you that this SNR is going to break simply that back tested enough and you'll understand you'll you'll see what i mean by that okay all right so let's continue with our flow right we have the snr right here like i said the break above that will give us a clue that this will eventually break now we got into the spy and you see me stacking orders on across all time frames. I'm in this buy. I'm looking to add more into the buy again. This is how I'm doing my full marching compounding, right? I'm I'm picking H4 daily weekly levels, only trading reactions from them, and I'm going full margin at them. And then when I secure profits, I'm running profits i have open p l i have more equity to play with in full margin and then with the profits that i have already made 
I'm going full margin with them, right? So it's it's not it's not impossible. I, I I remember reading a comment yesterday on the Discord, like, is it really possible to make uh to go to uh 50k from 100 bucks? Um, let me just show you guys something real quick. Let me just show you. Mind blowing shit. Yesterday's balance was at thirty eight. This morning's balance is at one thirty nine. Right, full margin type of trading. This is also the same account. From where is it? Uh, Discord. This is also the same account that was at five K yesterday, right? I had this trade, and I'm running this this trade here. Uh, at that moment in time, I secured out those profits and then I made another 10 bands. So now I'm at 20. And then uh, it was London Open. I had another layers, I'm layering these trades, uh, took a small buy. Well, actually, then it became a long, a big buy. Um, and at this point, from that, from that sell down up until this morning, I was able to take thirty five k to one hundred and thirty five k in just two days. So, um. Well, actually, if you think about it, 5K to 135 in just two days. So um, going full margin at these levels is how you can do it. I'm telling you, bro, it's game changing. Just follow follow what I'm showing you and, and you, you'll be able to make more money than me. All right. All right. So, okay, let's continue. Continue moving forward. So you missed. So you missed the the the, uh, the buy here. That's fine. That's cool. There's always an opportunity with gold. Price just created another decision level to go up, right? So what do you want to see? H4 closer rejection of the decision level, which is right here. This H4 is is how you could start initiating a position to go for this buy. I hope H1 allows me to uh, go go lower. So it, when you see this rejection, then you go to H1. That's your H. That's your level. You want to see how H1 is being formed. Let me just uh, try to denote this candle. Perfect. So you would have to ask yourself the question, right? You have a market flow of daily. You have an H4 decision level. Now you want to go into the market with the H1 development of an H4 candle. If you're bullish, what does the market need to do? It needs to go down first. So then it opens. And then it goes, it's probably jabbing up into, I hope M15 allows me to, 
I hope because it, it, there there is a decision level here. There is. Um, there if there isn't, I'll I, we can improvise and I'll show you something else. But uh, let me just um. Perfect. Okay. If you're bullish, the market needs to go down, right? This is your age for decision level. We already got the rejection. We want to get involved. You can use M15 to find a decision level within that space and, and get involved. You can see right here that this gap level is what H4, the, the first H4 level was rejecting, and then H1, uh, your your H1, the rejection for the next H4 candle is coming back there again as well. Then to sharpen your entry, just pull a trend line. There's plenty here. Uh, some people have issues with uh, not on that works. Some people have difficulty um, pulling trend lines, but try to be ob objective with your trend lines. There's what four or five that we really do focus on. Um, this is more of like a, a a continuation. Most continuation trend lines are either trend line one or uh, because this is a breakout, you could pull your breakout from here and, and pull something like that. But this one didn't work because we like to go, we like to enter below the S knot or the key level. Um, the one that I see is right here. It's the, uh, what is it? The head and shoulders trend line. When there's a head, in between the three points so you can enter as price it's crossing into it and it's rejecting it and you can go full margin there right to manage the trade because you got in and a 15 minute decision level you would need to see it break a 15 minute drop decision it's like it's repetitive bro it's it's this right you see this massive push up you want to see it break this guy right here. That is enough to tell you that the market is going to continue going up. If you're ballsy, you could. If you're ballsy, you can even add more here. Uh, how how you could do that is the same exact thing. What I just showed you from H four to H one to M fifteen. This is M fifteen. If you guys like going to M5 and M1, you just look for the same thing. You have a rejection here. You look at M5 and see if there's a decision level that was here, that was rejected, and then you enter again. All right, so let's continue moving forward. Uh, Rob, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, can you go to H4 real quick? And I want to annotate. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Uh, for example, it rejected this decision level. Oops, sorry. No, no, no. This sorry, decision. No. Uh, this one right here, and then it gave us another reaction here. Do we mm -hmm. blindly enter on the decision level, or we need to find the time frame, uh, the trend line respective to the time frame we're on? So you know, actually, that's a good question. I um. In the beginning, I've been entering off of the decision level, but I found that uh, entering just strictly from the decision level brings, uh, it, 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 it holds, but there's just too much drawdown, especially for like a full margin trade or, or even a prop firm challenge. Uh, you experience a lot of drawdown. So what, how to do that is uh, entering off of a trend line and then using multi time frame and finding um, a refinement. So uh, let's see if we could do that for this guy right here. Let's 
this is let me clear some of these levels out. You can just use this one right here. And we see this rejection as you have mentioned. And we want to get in, involved. Okay, so we'll go to H1. And then you will see that right there. Ten point rejection. So sometimes you don't need the trend line, but it does help if you have it as a confluence. But um you can see how how clean it was. You don't need you don't even need it. You can just you can just enter from there. Um so then how you would manage this is you would need to see the break of a decision level. Moments where you don't get the the break of the decision level right away um, can cause uncertainty and doubts. Uh, what, happened, what time was this? This was what, uh, 6, uh, I don't know if it's 6 a.m. or uh, yeah, 6 a.m. So uh, it was like, in New York volume has probably slowed down a bit. I don't know, maybe that's just my logic. The volume slowed down, whatever. But you want to see uh, the H1 because you got in on the H1 uh, time frame. You want to see the break of the H1 decision level that caused price to go down. Also, you can get you can use this back test it if you like but you don't you don't really need to you can also see a break of the previous decision level here i haven't really gone too with anyone with too deep about uh uh the uh decision levels used used from the far left um that's going to come in a little bit but I think if you guys can understand this, then you will understand how to use that much more better. Um, so let's pull our levels. We have this one here. We also have this one here. Why this level here? Because the normal conventional SNR approach we like to trade these reactions, right? SBR, RBS. Right. That's that's the most basic uh SNR setup there is in the book, right? Um we know that there's also a decision level here. When you see that price broke that decision level, that can also give you an early indication that any drop is just a pullback for price to continue going up. You can you can do that. You can do that. If your your uh the main one is a little bit too far or there's indecision. I would, I would, I would definitely wait for this one here. But this, the break of this, can also give you a good indication of that. Um, so, if you didn't have this, if you didn't have that, you got the entry here, and you want to manage this position. How do you? Um, what do you do? What? How, how do you? What do you do? Okay, so. You have the closure here. Price is testing this. Let me see if I can go into M15. Got the entry here. You can use multi time from analysis at, at, at its true essence because it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a term that. I, I learned from smart money. I don't use smart money, but they say the markets are fractal, right? So if there's a decision level in H1, 
it's not just H1. There's a decision level also on M15, M5, and M1 as well. But we don't go that low because sometimes it could be too much and overwhelming. But if you decided that you wanted to trade at M5 decision levels, you could do that same thing as well, right? So going into M15, you can see that this level, this open and close level was the level that took us into our point. When you saw that, when you saw the break of that level, that decision level, then you would have confidence to hold the trade for higher pricing, right? So then we'll move up the next time frame because then what we're doing is we're relating to time. That is time and closure and the breakout or the rejection of key levels using time and closure of the time and day. I'm not gonna go into the theory of it. It's not really too important, but now you see that uh, you have your H1 candle opening up while you're viewing the M15 candle, it's whatever, M15, uh, what is it? Let's just say uh, it's 815, right? So what's the next, what's the next uh, hour? It's, it's nine. Um, you would have to start monitoring M30 and then you would monitor at H1, right? Again, we want to see the break of our our decision level on H1 to continue moving up, uh, moving up right? We've just seen that we have an H, a M15 confirmation giving us the indication that price is gonna keep going up. Okay, great, fine. You missed this entry, no problem. You can enter again right here. I don't think M5 is going to be present with this as far back in time, but you could get involved in here. But even then, if you don't, you if, if you just wanted to take the retest, pull the trend line, you could. There's plenty right here. Uh, I, I could find one or two. Most definitely, it's gonna be. Uh, I mean, you could use it. You could use something like this as well. You can see H and S is right here. <clears throat> I keep going back to this one, and then you can pull something like that and enter here. You don't even need. You don't even need to use that. You can just use the decision level that price just broke. Right? Easy. All right. Cool. So then you got in here. You got in here playing from the m15 uh m15 time frame you see that you have another drop decision level that you need to see it break for you to manage this position up right okay it's great it it broke the the fact that chance what's up um real quick uh the the decision of levels that you choose it does it either has to be like at the starting or the ending of like a, a rally in price yes yes exactly what that's exactly what it is that's exactly what it's 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 engulfing it's pretty much engulfing uh for those of you who don't know it's just an engulfing level right here and this is not how the market happens every time, but you will also get vari a variation of it. So it will take multiple candles sometimes for it to engulf. And nah, this is a bearish candle. And this is a bearish candle. You would look for the opening close level. No, 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 no. That's not the one. It's this one. This is the decision level that ended up breaking above this level right here. And but then, the source is the first one, right, uh, Robbie? It's not. Source is always the first one, right? No, 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 no. no. That's not that's that's oh it's the that's one we take the one that's the closest to the, the break closest. of the level. 
the closest. That's because because if you okay, fine. You can, let's mark this out, right? Let's mark this out. What happens is when we when we map it out, we see the breakout happening. What most people are gonna do is they're gonna take the break and retest of this support right here, right? But what happens is the market is going to create a wick and it's actually gonna drop into that level right there and then go. Does so that make is, sense? Yeah. We have to play it by we have to play it level by level. We, it, it, like you can say that this is a source right here. You can say that it is what also it is a support. It, it's a classic support level. Yeah, you can you can use it, but the decision that broke this level is this the closest one, right? And what gives us more confluence is that if you see this happening, price rejects this level, then what you do is drop down a time frame and then look for, you know, how the candle is opening. If you're bearish, the market needs to open low, high, and then continue up. Mm -hmm. And then your, your, your trend line is going to be there somewhere. So that is, that, the, this is the basic look. This is, I would say, blend or EG blend. I don't know. Give it a name. Type 2, whatever. So um, is it, is like, so these three consecutive candles, uh, there just be one big engulfing in a higher time frame, no? Yeah. Yep. So, yep. um, so isn't this isn't this just a gap? So then, what case? you could do is like say this is uh what is it uh H four or something, right? You would see it on the daily, it's like that, but then when you go to H4, you would be able to denote this level right here as H4. So then when you see that price is respecting your daily level and then your H4 refinement, you can start trading from that level. What can oh. also happen is that you can get a deeper, you can, you can get a deeper pullback, but we play it with the closest one in reference to the higher time frame, that's why you don't. We don't really like to go too low, because there's there's just going to be too many decision levels for you to 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 play from. But look, you can trade these levels. You can trade them all. Decision level gave us this reaction to what this SNR level that didn't break because obviously this is an M15. The higher time frame direction is coming back into this decision level here, and then when you see, uh, I, I could keep going. I could keep going on with this, but let's go. Let's follow the process and, and go with the H4 daily level uh, direction. So. H for demonstration was that we want to get involved in the buys. Right, this buy. And one that I show you is that you have the break of the decision level. So when you see that happening and then price coming back, it probably most definitely found some type of resistance here. This is also a decision level that you need to consider. I'm actually kind of happy that we found this, but because this is when people start freaking out about pullbacks, right? What is a pullback? What is a true pullback and what is a breakout? What is, uh, that's what we need to be able to uh, establish with market flow, right? We're already bullish on the daily. H4 gave us confirmation multiple times that we're bullish. It didn't break any key 
uh, decision levels. When price found support, you can take the counter trend. You can take the counter trend trade because this is two, three hours worth of price action. Understanding that any drop is just a pullback. So then you see that price broke our drop decision, and now it's reacting to another uh, decision level. So why this decision level though? But why why this one? Or even why this one? Exactly. Why? 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 On this time frame. You can just denote it is you can just denote that this push up caused the break of this SNR level. It's a key level. It caused the break of something, right? And most definitely found something up here. If I could find it, I will show you. All relating to current market price, but I want to show you guys something. If I can get. It's coming to this decision level right there. Okay, so price is re rejecting that, rejecting this. Um, it came down, remember, we, 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 we were bullish at this point, right? Because of this rejection, this H4 rejection, the push up, push up, push up, push up came up. And then this, this last push or whatever you want to call it, gave us that entry to get involved into the buy. Um, but it didn't break the decision level, confirming our bullishness. So when price came back up into it, you're going to get a reaction from it. The reaction is just the pullback. Just, just remember that the, 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 the reaction is just the pullback. So then where is the pullback going back into? It's going back into the decision level that broke this level here right what did i say you want to see the level get rejected one time at least and then you try to get involved at the second time let me just make sure this is right yeah so let's look at this this is uh this is h1 let's go to m15 right so what do we want to see if we're bullish we want to see the candle open low when you see that happening it's going to be a full bodied it's going to be full bodied uh at that moment in time it's going to look it's going to look like whoa like one of these candles right here but you already have confirmation for multiple, you already have multi time frame confirmation. You already have your level confirmation. Just take this out and then pull your trend line. Uh, I can see something like that. Or something like this. No, that's not it. Something like this, maybe. Oh, I don't see it. I don't see it. It's here somewhere. Oh, yeah, right here. 
So you take that, you take, you use that as a confluence and you take the buy. And then to manage the trade, M15 break of a decision level, great. You have a couple, you have your opening close level, you have your EG level, and then you hold the trade. All right. And then relating to time, you want to see how H4 and H1 is closing, right? What time is this? This is at 11 for Orlando. I believe the uh, four hour candle closes at nine. So there's two more hours of the next four hour candle. So let's play price forward on H1. You could say you're in the buys here, you earn the buys here, and you want to continue holding it, or you want to start taking a profit. Um, so let's play price forward. Okay, great. You could take that re entry again. <laughs> um, pulling this. Pulling this level is also valid as well, because it was once a decision level. It's like a uh, what is it? Far left. We'll go over this concept, um, but you could you could use it. It's 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 completely valid. There is justification to it. Um, but for those of you who went through T's mentorship, this is uh like a broken H and S level, right? It's just uh, it's this, level, it's this level here, but I'm using the the decision level that created uh, the break. You can use the SNR, why not? Yeah, you could use it, no problem. And then you pull the trend line and you get enter, and you can enter there. Um, but I prefer I prefer me personally. I rather prefer the gaps and uh, the the engulfing level. Um, all right, so let's continue with the price action. What is what is the next what is the next uh level that you want to see break, and um to continue your buys? What do you want to see break? You want to see the break of this guy right there, exactly, right? So let's see if that happens, and if it doesn't how can we control our trade so by the, by now at this point in time you should have paid yourself something at, at least or put your trades at break even me being a full margin trader i don't use sl so i'm very tight with my my management when i see for example uh if i got into this buy right here I got into this buy right here and it traveled what? It traveled 120 pips. You best believe your ass that I'm taking something off of the table. Um, but say that I did not take anything off the table. My entry line, let's just say it's right here. I'm never, ever, ever going to let price get back into my, my entry zone. Ever, not I'm never. I'm not. I'm never gonna say. Uh, it's just a pullback. Um, it's just going to retest this level again and then go. No, 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 no. Because. Excuse me. Excuse me. What? What's up, brother? Uh, yeah. Can Can you show Can Can you show me exactly like, uh, uh when uh, something went wrong about your analysis? Because it actually. This when you, you know, yeah, it happened, of course. Can you show with the this uh, let's say 15 minutes right now, uh, when approximately or precisely when you decide to stop because you see you went wrong, you know? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, yes. good question. All yeah. right. Because because we have we have the let's say the SOP when it's all good. But uh, let's good. presume, yeah. If it's good, we do we do like this. We break, we retest, we re-entry. But if it's not good, what 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 we what should do? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let me draw it out theoretically, and then we can go over some examples of when it doesn't work. Right. So you have 
It's right here. And then there is going to be some type of level up here. Most definitely something like this. Yeah, that's right. And we have this. And you want to get involved in this buy. So say this is H4, you got into the H1 entry. So we got in here. What can happen is for when you take the shots at these at these levels, you have to see the break of this decision level. But for this example, you could see that this is a pretty long, big stretch, right? It's, it's a big stretch. What could happen is that it could take multiple candles for it to happen, or it doesn't happen at all. What you do to manage your risk is that if you got into this trade and you're like full margin or something, or you didn't you didn't even pay yourself anything just close the trade if you if you feel like the momentum or the push that you're expecting isn't happening even on m15 if it's not happening just close the trade like uh let me see some examples right now I'm seeing everything that's working, so it's hard to find what's what doesn't work. <laughs> I barely take any losses. Um, let's see. All right, let's do this one. This trade would have eventually have worked out for you. But this is when you, this is perfect example actually. Mm -hmm. All right. You got into the trade around this zone, right? This area right here. Let's just say, for example, your decision level that took price down is this level here. And you see that it was rejected. Got rejected. It's all right. It doesn't matter. Yes, we, yes. we 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 can still we can still hold the trade. Then you see that it's been rejected one more time, and then it surpassed our uh, decision level that took price to this level. So when you see that on M fifteen, right when it creates a drop decision, you can just exit exit your trade. Because that could signify the break of this SNR. Which it didn't, but in many cases it does. The break of this level will give us early sign of continuation to the downside. Um, but this is derived from a higher time frame trade. But that's how you can manage your, your trade. So then the entry is right here. You see this big push down and you see it create a drop decision, then you can immediately close the trade, right? Okay. okay. Um I don't know how low in time frames you go. But then if you uh, close usually it, I use uh, M30 uh, for the entry with trend line, you know. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's yeah. new to me to see the M15 with the, the daily level and, and the 
uh, the decision oh, of yeah activity. you should you should definitely start incorporating m15 because my 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 logic is um if you use h4 h4 to h1 there's four candles that complete the cycle of the h4 candle the same thing could be used with h1 to h m15 it takes four mm -hmm. candles so you could break it up in quarterly increments and you could use your time you could use the clock right um like this so what this is 12 15 30 45 right when you look at the clock and you try to get into these trades the new hour is opening you're bullish during this moment in time you're looking at m15 time frame you're looking at how the m15 candle is being formed right if yeah. you're bullish you're going down you're, you're going down and mm -hmm. that we, we, we've already determined that um but then that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that because you have to refer to h1 then right m15 can break it up like that because if you just wait for uh m m m uh h1 closures uh you're gonna miss out on a lot of information i think m15 gives us the perfect balance from like the extreme lower time frame um and you can break it up in a quarterly um a quarterly way just as you would with H4 to H1. Um, mm. I wish I could explain this better, but if I were yeah, to give you a hint. Yeah, I think well, I, I know what you mean. Like it, it's good to, to, to see M15 because we can be more precise, let's see, precise and uh, sure, yeah. uh, evaluate the price when it's, uh, when it's break on respect the decision level on this time frame. Yeah, because there's also decision levels on M15 too, you know? So you can manage your trades. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So let's look at some more examples. And um, I promised you guys I would look over this cell right here. So... We have our monthly level right here. Break out here. Let's look. Let's go over that because before this month started, when you saw this breakout, everyone in their mind who trades this way are, is telling themselves, "I'm bearish. I'm bearish," and uh, gold is gonna go. Gold is gonna go. Gold. Gold is gonna go to hell. Um, but that didn't happen actually after it found support. When weekly created a rally decision right here. And also weekly, you have to bring this level into weekly respected that level as well. So then weekly created a rally decision. It didn't break anything significantly. Well, actually, maybe it did. Let me check it. What's on the daily? I mean, Robbie, with the you know logic you are saying, like. Uh, if you go on to the left side, any engulfing candle would break, uh, you know, some kind of uh, additional level on the left, right? So that means that we don't have to particularly see which uh, it broke, if I'm not wrong. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like if you don't have a point of reference at current market price, then you could go back and use uh, decision levels from the past. Um, I, I would say up to four times. You could go even more deeper, but I, I, from my from my practice and experience, I'm saying up to four times is enough for you to see push up to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Um, so for that, when we saw that monthly breakout, there was something on the daily that shifted mar market structure to make the new month begin uh, bullish. Um, we have that daily rejection. Here it is right here. We have the break of a decision level right here but why this decision level why is this so significant why not this level let's check it out You guys look very closely, it closed below this level here. This, this push down closed, it, th that's how precise it is. And it's actually kind of scary how precise this, 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 this shit is. But just that simple closure uh, is, is a significant decision level, right? Because what happened is at that moment in time, People are buying from this level. We take this buy, we take this buy. We ex uh, Larry, what's up? Yeah, I wanted to ask, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanted no, to no, ask. No, 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 you're good. Okay, I want to ask, you say, you're saying that a decision level can be a level that took price to a higher time frame level, or it can be the level that broke out another decisional level. Is yes, exactly, precisely, precisely. Yeah, so this is an important level because it took out a, a decision level. So we have a daily rejection and then we get the push up and it breaks above our, it breaks above our decision level. And this break, gives an indication that this will break as well, which it did, right? It took a couple of days, but it did. And it gives us that early sign. So when you see that breakout happen, this rejection pushed down back into that, what is it, break and retest. Like I said, it's the SBR, RBS of decision levels it tested this level to eventually break out and give us a more confirmed bullish storyline. So then we would have to say that any drop is just a pullback, right? So then what happened is the market flow would be that monthly is bearish, daily is bullish, weekly has not yet, come, weekly, uh, this is Thursday, Weekly has not been completed yet. So we can't say if weekly is bearish or bullish yet, but we're gonna find out in just a moment. Then you look at this opening close. To get involved in this, you would have to use multi-time from analysis because you have uh, only just a, a quick retest of it and, uh, and a go. It didn't give us a second one. Um, so if I go to H4, pull that. It's like HNS level, but I'm, I'm yeah, it is HNS level, but I'm picking exactly, exactly, Patrick, exactly. Um, this right here could throw a lot of people off right here but 
let's see if there's anything on H1 as well. There is. There is, and it lines up perfect. That level lines up perfectly with the H1 decision level. And you see that you have a rejection of it at one time already. And you see that, pull your damn trend line, and then enter the trade, right? So to answer um, the Peaceful Warriors question, you know, this, this took a very long time to break and give us confirmation to go to the upside. So how do you manage this trade? It's just on this time frame, how can you how can you play? How can you continue to play this move up? The most current decision level is right here. Of course, we can all already observe that. We can already observe this drop decision level. That is also a key level that we want to see break. Mm -hmm. But then you can also, if you don't, this is a big push down. This is a very big, big push down. So for price to cover this, it needs to what? It needs to travel almost 250. I remember this was like PPI or CPI. You would need price to travel 200. 50 pips for you to confirm bullishness so there has to be another way for you to determine that you would need to see it you need to see movements in this area break uh spr levels in here too if if you if you have the balls if you have the capital if you have if you did that set set and forget mentality fine just wait for that but most of us we don't have those that kind of mentality so we want to see how we can get how we can confirm and make sure we can get involved even more we got in here let's let's add some more here so then you pull h1 let's just look at h1 but let me just see if there's any h4 any before i proceed h4 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 H four. Yeah, there is one. This level and this level. This level is good because this level, um, if you look this push up caused a break so it is significant and then it gave us a nice little push up as a retest of it but it is important because when price came back into this, this, this source point it drove price up a bunch of points so it is a decision level that you can consider for your analysis moving forward so let's push it over, go to H1. Rob, Rob you got a question. Yo, what's good, Kai? Yeah. Go back to, can you please go back to uh, H4 real quick? It's mm -hmm. one of the decision level that you drew. Uh, yeah, so this one, this part right here, right? Um, the, the line that you're, the, the, the line that you're currently pointing at, um, what makes that one a decision level? This decision level, so it's actually, it, it's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, yeah. It's, it didn't really do, like, for me, like, this is when, um, well, I think someone asked a bit earlier, well, this is the source and this is, you know, uh, the other, you know, what, what, but why not this one and this one? It's because you want to see which decision level broke out from the bearishness in this scenario, right? This right, right. was the opening close, but why use this one? 
because in that moment in time, our only point of reference would have to be, we would have to start pulling basic looks of a decision level because uh -huh. I mean, without this, you wouldn't have gotten this, of course, right? So we mm -hmm. would have to see, we would either have to see it break or even a, just a, a break in and retest of it. We'll see, if we'll get that in the lower time frame so we can get involved in the re-entry, but. Okay, cool. I'm pulling yes, it yeah, because. I was asking the same question, yeah, as the, um, whoever that asked the earlier question, so. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pulling it because our point of ref, I mean, yeah, I think this is the one right here that gives us a better, better thing, but I'm pulling it because in real time, I'm doing this in hindsight, but in real time, you need to do this type of work right here so then you can, you know, make more decisive decisions. Uh, all right, so let's go to decisive decisions. For the lack of a word, more, more calculated decisions um okay all right so let's go to that and you know what let me just change the colors so i don't get confused Yeah, so the bottom one really doesn't give me too much. Let's see. Well, first we have the rejection of the eighth one rally decision. Price broke above that H4 level. That could give us some type of confidence. Um, and we have that blue decision level. That gets broken out right here. Uh, I think we're going to need to go to M15, actually. We'll get more better information. Mary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the shit mess. Oh, okay, okay. So you have the break here. Your decision level is right here, but it didn't get tested at all. It's all right. Um, I don't want to go to M5, but I am sure 100% that we're going to see something on M5 that's going to allow us to get involved. So let's do it anyways, just so then I could prove a point. Could have, you could have used that level right there, being that it lines up with your uh, M15 level. Um, me personally, if I got if I got into this bottom, I wouldn't even really want to trade this. We don't know if it's going to happen, but if I see this happening in real life, I, 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 in, in live, live price action, I wouldn't even want to touch it. I, now I remember this this uh bit of price action. It was very difficult to make a decision because even me myself, I was uh I was bearish too. So when I when I'm seeing this happening, um actually I'm I'm like hedging positions and uh to be honest, I, I missed this move here and then I got this buy here. This buy came from uh, very simply actually it was on the daily. Yeah, 
Yeah, that came from a daily level. Right here. I'll tell you why though. Because it might be confusing. All right, so you see this. Change the color. All right, you see this drop decision level, and you see this push decision level. Right, this broke this resistance level. So to me, that's when I was able to validate the the act of the, the the bullishness i'm thinking to myself yeah the monthly is bearish but now the time frames are clashing weekly and daily are bullish so where exactly am i going to become you have to use the the monthly to monthly logic from that point on you have to start looking at it from that that thing right if you're bearish on the monthly you have to take your cells from the monthly levels i did take cells from this gap right here they weren't sustained i could have held them but the pullbacks actually came back into this level here we'll go over that in just a moment but um let's go over the buy so when you saw the break of that decision level, the quick retest, this quick retest, it's just MTF H4 again, like like I've been showing you guys. Uh, Right here. This gap level, it was rejected one time. That's all I really needed to to validate it. Yeah, it was a bit some it was a it was a bit it was a bit drawdown, but uh my trend line actually came in from h1 as well it was right there so then yeah even though it was a little bit drawdown uh yeah i got involved in that buy okay let's go over the cells that happened here that monthly level. I think it's important for us to. I, I, I you, you guys can see the, all the trades that I've been taking are coming from the daily, daily weekly levels. Just respond from. It's just I trade from those levels, but then I'm also trading from the H four decision levels that either broke it or rejected it. Uh, if you guys can follow with me in that logic. All right. So the cells were very simple. It just took some patience for you to really capture this move. We go to the weekly. We can just denote this level as your monthly. All right. What you want to do is then look for the weekly decision level that broke out, right? It's this one right here. So then let's just take this one out, right? I did take this cell and then I took the buys up. I, I, I have screenshots of it too, uh, right here. Uh, the buys came right here. I got that buy and then I got these cells. 
then ultimately that's where it's at right now. But that I thought this was it because it already gave us a confirmation of this level here. Doesn't happen all the time. Um, okay, so let's go into daily real quick and see if there's any more refinement of our level. There is. A, there is. Just like that. So we will leave this as it is. Okay, this is weekly. This is daily. Why this daily level? Follow with me. Simply because it broke multiple levels, a decision levels or even SNR levels. It's strong because you can see that this level, it held price for weeks and it pushed price up. And just a simple open and close, breaking it and then being respected, it's a key level. And now you see that price is swinging from it, right? So he's, the whole idea, I know you guys watch those those leaked videos of RUT and Fresh and Freshest and uh, you know, Fresh SNR. Uh, you don't need to use that anymore. Uh, I don't think he trades that way. And um, you can use, you can you, the level doesn't have to be fresh anymore at current market price it's preferred but now you have more points of if you use historical price action you have more points of references and um the ultimate goal i think for all of us in this room the 50 people in this room is to be able to find the logic between why am I allowed to use this level to trade this level here and then use the same level to, to trade trade above? Why can I initiate a swing from a point that was broken out and then play it again here at this pinpoint rejection? That is the true essence of what support and resistance is. It is a little bit confusing in the beginning, but it becomes easier, and I swear it does. Okay, um, all right, so let's go over those, though. Even then, you have, it, the weekly and daily is giving the same information, it's just a little bit, a little bit more drawn out, but let's go into the daily. So for me, I took the cell up here with the trend line. Uh, which one was it? Uh, I believe it was this one right here. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was this one right here. Boom. Then I saw this right here. What do you guys see? Do you see what I see? Can someone it say? It broke. It broke. It broke. Yes, it broke. So that means whenever there's rally, a break, just a pullback. any rally is just a pullback. Crazy. And I, and I took the buy. This Crazy. was all the layered, the layered buy, the layered, uh, all this, the layered cell. Where is it? Not Telegram, Ted scored. Uh, this one, this one, yeah, this one. Um, yeah. So the the cells, 
um, and then this one, this one, this one. It was just me messing around on M15, actually. Uh, Hello, Rob. Hello. Yo. Uh, bro, how did you catch the buy again in that area? In that area? Oh, yeah, we, we can go over that in a second. All right, all right, all right, all right. H4 daily. Okay. So the buy, okay. Let's mark that out and then go to H4. It was this gap right here. And if I were to go into the lower time frame, there's even more of a refinement. It, there's multiple levels that you could pick from. Um, there's also uh, for the uh, earlier one, the huh? earlier one, the earlier one you showed on the Telegram where you had an m5 trend line uh which one let me see oh no that's this court uh this one yep, yep oh yep. yeah 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 so that okay good good um and this one and then he, yes I think that's the yeah 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 Perfect. Yep, yeah, that's the one. So that's the. I just gotta look at this quick oh, Yes. The level was. We have also a trend line like uh, 411 on the low. Yeah, this low, this low, and the weak. This yeah. low, yes? Y yeah, one second. Let me just get the, uh, the, 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 oh, okay, the level. Okay, sorry, sorry. No, no, you're good, you're good. Uh, <laughs> it was this level. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky and, and a little bit more advanced one. But all in all, it's uh, just like a, you could just say it's a head and shoulders level but I'm, I'm using it from the decision point and then when I see that price broke this drop decision level so price you know you see that that price became uh it broke a key level and then it became bullish so then we, we 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 were able to determine that any rally up is just a pullback. I'm expecting that pre London, um, and then I, I was able to pull this this trend line here and then go. Um, did did you multi time frame with anything, Robbie, or this was just a five minutes? Uh, oh 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 you? no oh, oh yeah, dude. I don't even like trade M five, but yesterday. For some reason, uh, I was trading low. Like I, I, I was trading. I, I was trading. I was monitoring M five, um, because to be honest, um, that's how I was able to uh, get all these entries here. Uh, I got the top one here. And then uh, let me just get the screenshot out. Oh, that's the start of it. And then 
M15. Oh no, M5. Yeah, of course. Okay, so M5. I took this one right here, applying the same logic, M5 decision level, rejection one, enter it again. Then this one looked a little bit tricky, but it still made sense to me. This is the decision level that got rejected. It caused a drop decision and then it broke this rally decision. Uh, when I broke that, I told myself it could just be a quick retest up to test uh, one of these levels, either this SNR or this one. And I've seen that when price was rejecting this level one time, the entry came in here and the trend line was, I believe, something like that. No, that's not the one. Trend line, trend line, trend line, trend line, trend line. Where are you? I think it's in the sum up here. I think, oh no, that's still here. No, I can't find it. No. I think that's the one, bro. That was the one, but I, 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 I usually like the trend lines that cross above my level. It is it is a trend line. You could use it. You could use it for sure, for sure. Um or maybe it was on M fifteen and I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, nonetheless, uh, I guess what, uh, oh yeah, let's go over this one real quick too. Let's go over this one. And if you missed the, the, the top entry, how can you get involved in this, this movement down? I can show you. So we already determined our level is right here. And we also have this level here. And then H4 gives a I mean, you don't really have to refine it, but I don't like re I, if I if I pull a daily level, I don't like to refine it. I just like to draw out the the H four level that lines up with it, because then it gives me a point of reference that yeah, these they're both they're both in line. I don't need to. You shouldn't need to over refine daily levels. You need them in your charts. Um, is there anything else in H? Oh yeah, okay. That this was it. This was it right here. H one entry. Simple, simple, simple. And then started stacking my orders here, and then dropped. Um, if you missed this uh, initial point, let's see how you could do that. Because some people don't really like to enter from the H1, either because they don't have enough confidence yet, which is completely fine because I was like that too. Um, you like to see it tap into your higher time frame level and then you drop down to M5 and whatever. whatever. I, I know people do that, so it's completely fine. Do it. Uh, if, it if, if that helps, just do it. If, if it helps, just do it. Um, the uh, yeah well this is it right here 
break right here and then your decision level would be here and you just take a trend line that goes above into your zone uh is it this one i think so yeah that one yeah let's see if that one was also Mm, I, I kind of like this. Oh, from the bottom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Wasim. Yeah, there you go. Yep, yep, yep. There's plenty. There's plenty. And um, I wasn't awake for this massive push down, but um, to even get these quick retests, you can also get you can also take those retests <laughs> uh yeah you can you can bro let me show you no this is a drop decision level it took out this rally decision level this, this one right here retest let's go to m5 M5, M5, you can take that retest with a trend line and enter here. I'm going to start trying to, I, I wanna, I wanna take less trades or like I wanna spend less time on the charts. So if I could um, like for me personally, if I could trade this leg, right here which is what 70 pips but then have like layers here layers here layers here um i could i could double i can double triple 10x my account like that if i can get the, the the right plays right instead of just playing from this one point up into here if i can catch the you know if i can catch the layered plays that's all i need for the day um that's all you really need for the day too. It's, it's one trade idea with multiple entries. You know, understand what I'm saying? Um. So yeah, that that kind. Of, I mean, literally, that's the essence of what I'm doing every single day. It's just decision levels and trend lines and multi time frame, like any other syllabus that you're ever going to see in the Malaysian SNR community, anywhere you go. It, any any teacher that you learn from, they're gonna teach you multi time frame SNR and uh, trend line, and it's just the different variations of how they're using it. Sometimes you have to go through all the teachers to learn to find your flow. Maybe you might not get what I'm teaching you. Maybe someone else is, and maybe you can pick up on one or two things with me and then learn something else from someone else to apply to your own trading. But um, I, I can pretty much guarantee that most of the people in the, the most of the 40 people in this room right here are trading, um, are coming from the SNC community. And I, I know that you're trying to simplify your trading. Um, in the sense of if you wanted to take this trade, if you, you would need to see a lot of things happen before you can get this pushed down. And um, you can see that I only did three things. I pulled levels from the multi time frame, identified the decision level, and then pulled the trend line, and I, I'm in the trade. And then managing the trade. Um, it's just it's just either seeing the rejection or the the breakout of the decision level that took price into the decision level. <laughs> uh, so let's just say this this level was it. You just want to see the break of this one happening right here, and then again you can see that price came back up to test it for the entry again down below but i could do this all day and show you 
all the moves here um one by one it's all there it's all it's i don't know how i don't know how, how i don't know how it was it, it was designed but the shit works and that's all that matters <laughs> um so yeah is there any questions before i let you guys go and i, I don't want to make this call too long so some people get it bro i hello bro yeah Bro, I have a like question on risk management. Like, how do you manage your trades? Like for today, today, like, can you go to that today's price action? Like, what you are showing on M fifteen? Mm hmm. On M fifteen, yeah. Like today, I just took uh, some positions over here. Okay. And when price <laughs> when price was coming up like this, oh, wait till I play it. Yeah, I I just took this level and I executed here and let just I layered some positions and like mm -hmm. when price was coming up here when it like did this I thought that now it can jab up to here or here something so I just okay. closed all my positions and like here when it come here so like mm -hmm. what do you do like when all like I have positions here here here. So yeah. what should we do when it's coming up like this? Because I know that it, it will go down, but I don't know that how much drawdown I can afford or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, how how to do this thing? Okay. Okay. Let's go to H1 first. Morning in progress. Okay. Um H1, 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 let's try to be objective and explain this because I think it will answer a lot of doubt that people will have. Um, so you're, you're mainly particularly focusing on the M15 time frame, yeah? Yeah, like one hour and, and 15. Like most, let's say here I have one hour level. And if I got a one hour level here, then I'm trying to like get the M15 to go to there and then again go to there like that, like mm -hmm. up and down. So, yeah. All right. So when you, when you, when you say you took the cell, you took the, you took the cell here, uh, where exactly did you take it? Uh, I took it from here. Right, you took it from here. Yeah. And then you saw that price came down. What you need to identify is that it's just close below. That's close below. Is that I don't know where you placed your SL um but uh when you saw that this was the push up that took your price into your daily key level and then mm -hmm. this rejection came down to break this m15 you know because daily level is daddy so yeah yeah it's, it's, it's breaking this baby baby level right mm -hmm. uh you then have to start using the logic is that okay um new york is coming in i don't know actually this was this was new this was new yeah it was new new york is coming uh london is setting up for new york it gave us that that reaction i guess what i'm trying to say is that if, if we look at it from a technical standpoint, you don't want to see the violation of the decision level that broke this bubble, right? What, what, what where, where did that come from exactly? Um, the first one, the source was this. Um, like yeah. It has broken this one, right? Yeah. Oh. Exactly, exactly. But let's go into a different time frame because this could also be misleading for some people when they see that happening. Yeah, right. Uh, the the thing is, like, it closed up, up like this. No, then I just think, okay, it it just gonna spool up to this or this something, or it might jab up here and then come down. So on that 
time i just closed all the things and it just came down yeah let me see something let me see if there's anything oh uh, i think it it was qm level of 1 hour like if i'm not right like someone has taken that same trip from 1 hour level maybe uh, this is owanda i don't know if you use forex.com or or something but uh there's probably something cuz that does that does throw people off it throws it throws me off too when i see that happen but but it does happen and um uh for me like i would have still held myself because uh mainly because it's co- mainly it's because it's coming it's all coming from a monthly level right, and right. all already yeah. monthly bearish to so use that also as your um I, you use that as your uh point of reference okay so mm-hmm. what what's happening right now as far as price action goes right we know that monthly was bearish monthly came back up it last pushed up into our level and then mm-hmm. weekly it's thursday now yeah weekly found or i believe it found support here i think it's going to close above which is fine um but the main thing is is that weekly now is is bearish bearish because it made a drop decision right yeah. so if we go to daily and then try to observe areas of i mean it could keep going what daily what what this is what could happen right daily can open up tomorrow and then just drop like that it can do that like yeah. like 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 this candle like this candle it can do that mm-hmm. it could do that or it can come back into this level and this level here this level yeah and then what do you do at that moment you go to h4 and then you can see that that level that h4 level was a confirmed level it's like a gap level i don't know if you got if i went over gaps with you yet but it's a gap level it can come here and then trend line and trade back down and then or it's been here but you have to play it by the closest one you have to play it by time and closure you have to see if this level gets broken because if it does then that means you're going to get a, a little bit more of a push more right push, yeah. Yeah. push up right um let's see let's see if there's anything else on h4 the rejection is coming from here giving us this let's look at h1 see this right here don't let this throw you off right here cuz this right yeah, now exactly like this, it, this it, is what it, i was thinking yeah this isn't like, this isn't um this isn't a rally decision or it is but it's not a strong one because it didn't break anything on this it didn't break anything significant it just re- it, it went up and then in like it, know, it should it break came, came back down it has yeah. to break something yeah. yeah um so it didn't um let's go to m15 real quick yeah what could happen is what could happen is excuse me i'm sorry i i apologize let's see something real quick uh the worst is that we're coming from that monthly okay
what could happen is that is the monthly level that price crossed above coming from this area here. Mm. What could happen is kind of this, yeah. it could start lining us up for the pullback because now that we already determined our uh what is it direction what is what remember what ohlc is it's uh open high low and close mm -hmm. so all right so it will go up and up again it will high. Go down. and then now what you can see is mm -hmm. price doing that right now right or okay. even from so, even from the daily perspective, right? The daily perspective is that now it's creating that 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 thing right there, right? That that wick for the pullback that's happening right now. Where is it pulling back up into? Is the question. Um, I, now I see this level on the daily as well. And I'm gonna take out this monthly level. Hey, um, Robbie. Yeah. Uh, I know this is late in the game to be asking this question, but um, so every time when you mentioned OHLC, like what exactly are you emphasizing? Because you know, I I can see the candlesticks, and then I know what what OHLC is, but like, what are you trying to explain though? What What I'm seeing is what OHLC is is this right here. This is a bullish candle. The theory is, is that if you're bullish, the way a bullish candle opens up is it opens here, right? And it needs to create the wick first. It doesn't go all the way up here, do this, and then do this to create this candle. No, 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 no. It does not do that. It's simple, it, it does this. It, it opens here, drops, creates the high, and then low, close. So if you have this logic in your arsenal and you're anticipating bullishness, that's why when I say that um, when you see, when you, when you see this right here, right? When you see stuff like this happening, and then your decision level gets rejected, the next candle is opening here. You're already you're already expecting bullishness. So this this drop down into your level shouldn't be a surprise for you. This drop down should just be what you want to see exactly happening for you to enter the market. So let's look at that very quickly. And then we'll end the call because I think that's enough information for today. Um, <clears throat> so that's your H4 rejection. The candle opens up open high low you're expecting price to go down open high low and close open low high so when it lows into your level rejects into your level you're entering it's just the basic idea is if you're bullish the the, the price needs to go down first if you're bearish the price needs to go up first that's it um, this is a bearish bullish candle. So it needs to do this first. But but how do you multi time frame it, uh, Robbie? You, you, you said we can use four hours, uh, you know, thing yeah. for one hour and one hour thing for 15 minutes. How do you multi time frame? Can you just show that example? Like multi time yeah. framing this open high of loops. I'll show you this exactly. Right. Exactly, I'll show you. If you, I'll show you. So if we go to 
weekly. We go to weekly and we will look at let's look at one weekly candle. Uh let's look at this right here. Okay, fine. We have a breakout. We have a, a rally decision. So we expect bullishness. We're gonna look at this candle right here. What do you what do you see? You see that that was a bullish uh, a, a, a weekly a weekly breakout. That means that the following week you should expect the price to go down first for it to go up to complete the weekly cycle, right? So this is Friday. This is Monday. Monday opens and it's going low, 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 low into your your uh your decision level to continue going to continue the price up. The week ends here, right? If we go back into the weekly, that is how it went, right? Open low and then high. Let me show you another example. <clears throat> Let's look at this level here. Can you combine four hours to one hour and one hour to 15 minutes, all three? Uh, Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Okay. Um, you see that this candle right here closed below my, my key level. So I'm going to expect price to go up first and then go down because I'm bearish. If I'm bearish, if you're bearish, the market should go up first to tap into a key level and then continue going down, right? So if you go to H4, you had the breakout. So let's look at it from Monday, Monday, right? Monday, Sunday, 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 opens up here. Uh, sorry. Right there. Your opening price. So you should be managed in your mind right now, you should be ima imagining how the wick is being formed it's like this pretty much right a, a bullish candle it's like this so you have a breakout to the downside you're expecting a retest in form of a bullish candle to test a weekly resistance bubble how is that going to happen it's going to happen like this. Drop down high and then close. Okay. So, what happened? Sunday opened and then through Monday it drops down. And then finally, so this is like the wick right here. Right. So, this is, I'm about to put you on game. That's like the wick. So if I go into daily or weekly, actually, oh crap! Um, that era. Let's see. Okay. Sunday opens up, it drops. It's creating the wick of your weekly candle. And then 
the market is pushing up and then you're expecting that to happen because you have a breakout, a weekly breakout. So the retest should be happening in form of a bullish look. Your market opens up here, it created the wick, now it's creating the body. And then when it hits your level, your weekly level, I believe it was this guy right here. It, when it hits your weekly level, it's Friday. This is Thursday, Friday. And then, am I looking at, oh yeah, Friday, it then closes way below. So then if we were to translate that, that, that's what happens right here, right? The week, the day, the week opened up right here, H4, like I showed you. H4 opened up here, drop, went all the way up to our weekly level, and then drop. We go on to the weekly. That is exactly what happened. This is a bullish candle, right? I expected that to happen because I have a breakout. Right, even though this is a kind of a messy bullish example, but still, nonetheless, it it opened, uh, it opened low, high, and then we did this. Let me try to show you another example. I hope you can understand it because it's powerful. It works. Um. Let's look at, let's see something like. Ravi, I think, I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you're explaining OHLC, it's like you're, you're emphasizing cycles, right? Within time frames. I'm emphasizing the way a higher time frame candle is being formed through multi time frame analysis. So when you look at a wick, when you look at a wick right here, it's like you're bullish now at this moment in time. You have the rejection. So for you to get involved in this in this moment in time, you need to see you need to see the idea of OHLC in play. Like you're if you're bullish. If you're bullish, the only way you're going to get involved in this level is if the market goes down into it first. If you're bullish, that means that the bullish candle needs to form at the opening price and then drop down into your level so you can get involved. Then if I go into H4, let me go into this and then mark out the opening up this weekly and then I will go to Sunday Monday the week opens up and it drops so in your mind, you're already expecting that to happen, as in this forming the bottom wick first, and it, then it, back yes. up. Yes, it, it's forming the wick. You want to see price forming the wick into your key level. Let me just nice. change the. Let me just change the color of it so that you can see it more clearly. Okay, that's what it is. This is Friday's uh Friday's closer closing price. The week opens up right here. It drops into your level. You can get involved into this buy and then continue to ride up. That's all you are actually let me just um it's a little bit messy. But uh, let's go to daily real quick.
I want to give you guys a clean example so you don't ask me this question again later. Uh, this key level right here was rejected. So how can you get involved here is the way the market closed here is that open, high, low, and close. If you're expecting for price to come down here, it needs to go up first to attack and jab up into a key level to take price back down into the level to take price back up, right? So I hope I can translate it. It's a little, it looks a little bit confusing, but. I'm I'm getting it. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, it's, I hope it's you really get good. it. Yeah, yeah. I hope you get it. I hope you get it. I just don't remember this being yeah. explained. Like, yeah, um, I'm, I've only heard of OHLC, but then it's like, okay, go along with the flow. But then, I didn't know, you know, the importance of it. Just know that, like, if you it, a bullish candle, all, all all of these candles, at one point it opens up here, and it drops down, and then it goes up. Right, that's all you got to know. All these bearish candles, it opens up here, and it, it goes up, and and then it drops. When we, that's why we care about closure. That's why we care about closure, right? The way this candle closes, is that it closed below a key level right here. It did that. So then we see how the next candle opens up if we want to continue the flow. You see that this is the open of it and it just opens up just to retest our key level to continue going down. That's how you use that logic with multi time frame. Um, yeah, this is the weekly candle. This, could, this, this portion of price action, it could be just a day's worth of uh, of um, price action, and that could continue, that could confuse people thinking that you know price is bullish. That's again why we like to focus on um, higher time frame market flow. That is why also we were able to get involved in this cell right here, and because price broke out the key level. It's testing the monthly level, found monthly support. And then we just take the trades that take weekly, daily, we should be aware that because we have a monthly breakout, we're gonna get we're gonna get these pullbacks in form of a bullish run that will change the storyline for daily and below. That would make us confused, get us confused. So that's always important that we know the market flow for each of the higher time frame uh, um, each of the what you know uh, each of the market uh, what is it higher time frame levels. So I'm trying to sorry, say. Rob. Yo, no problem. Don't be sorry. Uh, I have a quick question. How you go to M15? How? You go to M15. Yeah. Like go daily to H4 to M15. Oh. How, how you do that? Oh, okay. How do I do that? Okay. 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 Good question. Uh, let's see if I could. Sure. Maybe can you do it with the current tweets because it's fresh in everyone's head. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So again, we have this monthly breakout. We have this monthly uh, decision level called the breakout. We'll go into weekly. First, let's confirm the breakout in the weekly. 
have a breakout up here. And size um, support. Great. Awesome. Let me change these colors to. And then we'll look at weekly here. Okay. Daily. You will see we have this right. This we'll make that yellow and fields. Okay. When you want to get involved, let's just say for this cell, not this cell. Let's look at the first one. You want to get involved in the cell. You don't want to enter from daily. So you drop down to H4, right? So let's do that. H4. You want to see if there is a decision level within that daily, um, daily level, and you can see that precisely. Right there. So let's draw that across. Or actually, I think that's not the one. And yeah, you 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 do gotta respect that one. But the actually the true one was up here. I apologize. Yeah. I don't know if you guys ever studied smart money or whatever, but um, whenever you guys look at a candle, um, let me make a point here. Say this is a daily candle or something like that. Your wick is right here. Your refinements come in the wick, right? So then you will see that uh, this is H4. Oh, excuse me. This is H4. This is H1. This is M30, this is M15. That is the refinements, right? That's coming from the daily level. That's pretty much exactly what I just did right there. If you can follow me. The refinements are important, um, but you don't want to over refine. You just want to, I think the best way to, the best refinement comes from H daily to H4 because H4 gives you, um, it gives you the bigger picture. H1, M15, it does give you something, but it, it's more in the more current price action. H4 gives you more of a storyline directional slide. But moving forward, you can see that above that weekly level, we have the daily decision level that was also rejected, right? And then we also have the H4 one right here. So for M15, okay, all, let's go to H1 first too as well. I don't know if it's necessary to go to H1 at this moment for this trade, but if you really, really, really need to, or want me to, we can pull this level here. Either way, you don't have to do that. We're, we're, we, 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 just, we just know that this is our monthly level that needs to get respected. This is our monthly level, and we want to see a shift in market structure. Um, 
and you really all you gotta all you gotta really look for is the the break of the decision level that took price up into the if you look at uh h4 level or h1 you want to see the break of that level so if this is h4 then you want to see the break of it and you see it you see that happening right so then let's go to h15 <sighs> to be honest, I uh, think this is not the best example for me to explain that multi time frame, but uh, the entry would be right there. Uh, let me see if I can get a better better view. One second, I apologize. Let's do that again. So like Rob, Rob, yo, yo, uh, when you go to M fifteen. What we need to focus like uh, only SR9 and turn line or decision level? Two? No, 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 decision level two. Don't don't use SNR anymore. SNR is going to line up with your your decision levels. Like if you look at uh, HNS, uh, yeah, it, it lines up with it. The higher probability HNS levels is going QML HNS whatever. Is gonna line up with the decision level, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the M15 uh, for the for this example, you see the daily level being attacked by M15. It rejects and it breaks and it creates a decision level, indicating that price is gonna become bearish, meaning that any pullback up is just a uh, it's just any pullback up is. Any push up is just a pullback. It's just a pullback, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see if I can show you some other example of that happening. Um, hey, um, Robbie. Yo. Um, so this, this whole, uh, the concept of this thing, looking for levels as as what you're doing right now. Yeah. Um, it's almost the same as storylines, right? Because like it'll it'll price will bounce from weekly level to let's say weekly support to weekly resistance, uh, daily support to daily resistance, so on and so forth, right? It's pretty similar that way. It is. It is. Okay. It is. Got it. Cool. All right. Yeah. Then I know how to apply. Yeah, I have a better. You, uh, you know, it's you better can now. Use, you can, you can use the line chart and 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 just see that the price is coming back into those levels yeah. you could do that you could do that too just so that we know what to anticipate using the ohlc con concept mm -hmm. uh, cool all right Th thanks bro no problem i think i also understood ravi i think uh you good uh, maybe when you find a better example i think you can explain it again yeah but yeah i, I think i understood i think <laughs> I think you have to go over through it in the market. Otherwise, you, you don't get it. I think it's like something intuitive that you get. It. Yeah, I, 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 that, that's the thing. It's I remember one oh one of my students 
um, learning about this stuff for one week and they're just lost and they just don't know what to do. But then like after two months, they pass the platform challenge. <laughs> so it's like just being uh, patient and letting your, uh, uh, you know, process develop. But I think this is a good example from doing the H4, H1 synthesis team. So uh, this was the H4 level, drop it down to H1, to its H1 decision level. And then we have a rejection of it. Go to M15. I guess the refinement comes from either you wait for an M15 rejection and then find the trend line in here. So if you can't find a trend line on H1, which usually isn't the case because there's always going to be a trend line, but if not, going into M15 can do that for you. Um, but also, if you didn't feel confident, all you would have to do is use M15 and see that M15 decision level broke, and then you could take the retest of it back up. So then you could take that guy back and then, and then take price up. Cool? It's, yeah, it's that way. It's that. You can use M15 as that. Like, you don't have to wait another, you don't need to wait for this to break, for this one to break to get the retest and then get the entry here. You can actually get the entry here instead. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Yeah, I think that that if you guys can replicate this, this process, uh, you'll be able to, if you can practice this a couple of times and with, with other forms, uh, other looks in price action, then you'll be in, in good shape. Literally, bro, it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. What 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 I'm showing you, but it's just like it it all it presents itself differently every time. Decision levels and all that. It's it, it's just presenting itself differently. So it's just scanning your eye to see it. You know, um, one other thing is these big candles. Don't 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 let this make you think that price is bearish. Don't use momentum as a form of confluence to confirm uh, a storyline. Use momentum as a, 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 as as a catalyst for the trade that you've already uh, gotten yourself into. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, we'll go over that stuff more. Uh, I just think that right now the stuff that you guys are seeing, if you can, if you can successfully get three or four trades in a row like this without taking a loss, you're in great, 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 great position. If you can, if you can get, if you can follow this process and get three to four, four wins straight without any losses. Then you're 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 well equipped to pass a, a prop firm. You're well equipped to pass a uh, or or flip flip account. Um, just, just follow the sequence, the system, all right, and and you, you'll be good. Cool. I'm going to end the recording.